All right, all right, all right. Hello, youth service. Can you make some noise? Woo, okay. How many of you, how many of you, 2023, pass by too quickly? Too quickly? Okay, there's some hands, interesting. How many of you, 2023, pass by too slowly, really? too boring, really? Okay, interesting, interesting. Pastor Roger, did 2023 fly by for you or was it slow for you? Just nice. Just, just nice. nice. Yeah. Okay, interesting, interesting. Okay, um, I, think, I think when we come to the end of the year, correct, this is something that we always like to do. Um, can you just turn to the person beside you and then just give them a high five, okay, and say, I thank God for you. Let's do that. Okay, and if you can look for your cell leader, okay, look for your cell leader, point at cell leader, go and high five them, give them a hug, okay, give them a fist bump and then say, I thank God for you as well. All right. And as we come to the end of 2023, um, you know, a lot of times we go through many different things in the whole year. Some, some of us, okay, 2023 might be a good year for us. Some of us, 2023 might be a bad year. But you know what? I just want to encourage all of us to be giving thanks to God in whatever season you're going through, whether is it a good or the bad, okay? So if you're ready to worship the Lord, why not you just stand up on your feet, okay? And come and fill the front. Come and fill the front. Okay, drag some of your friends along as well. Okay, come, come, feel the front, feel the front, feel the front. Now here, got empty spot. Come, close in, guys. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. Okay, this is what's going to happen. Okay, FCPC use of use of it. So, on the count of three. We are going to give the Lord a big shout, a big shout of gratitude, a big shout of thanksgiving. Are you ready? Are you ready? Woo! Only one person ready. FCBC use of this. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, on the count of three, let's give the Lord the biggest shout, the biggest shout, the biggest cheer, and give thanks to Him. One, two, three. Praise you, Lord! Yeah.
And we just sang, you know, we praise God in the valley, we praise God on the mountains, despite of whatever circumstances we may be in, one thing's for sure, God will definitely be with us. Amen? Amen. And it's going to be with us. So just worship Him and allow Him to move in our midst, even as we just praise Him and worship Him. Thank you, Lord.
stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see you working.
in the soul so good with every breath that I am needed I'm gonna sing I just sense the Holy Spirit moving. I don't know, but as I was singing the song, and God just placed this upon my heart. There are some of us here, when we sing this song, we struggle. We struggle to say that God is good in our lives. Because of the things that have happened, because of the things that have not happened, we struggle to say, God, you are good. But church, the Lord is here right now. I sense His presence. Don't take that into 2024. We're just two days away from the new year. So can I just invite all of us, raise your hands high or put your hand on your heart, whichever, whichever you feel led to do. And in a moment's time, as the music plays, I just want you to think about that one thing just one thing doesn't have to be big just that one thing that you can be thankful to God for that God has been good in your life we're not going to rush this moment but we're going to take our time time we're going to sing the chorus of this song again and as we sing the chorus of this song for some of us who cannot find anything to be thankful to God for I want you to sing it as a song of declaration over yourself over your situation over your circumstance for those of us who can find something to be thankful to God for I want you to sing and just lift up your hands in a, as a form of declaration as a form of thanksgiving to God saying God I acknowledge that you have been good in my life. So we're going to sing all my life. And all my life you have been faithful. Come on, let's just fix our eyes on the Lord. He has been good. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I'm going to sing. The good Come on, sing it again. Sing all my life, you have been faithful. Sing all my life, you have been faithful. All my life, all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I'm gonna see. Gonna see 
all the goodness of God. I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God. Lord, we give you praise and we acknowledge that, Lord, you are good. You are good, God, and that, Lord, you only give us good things. So, Lord, I declare that over each and every one of my brothers and sisters here, that, Lord, as we step into the new year, that, Lord, they will experience your goodness afresh in a powerful way, but, Lord, more importantly, in a personal way. So, Lord, we give thanks to you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Come on, why not we just give the Lord a big round of applause. Praise you, Lord. Come on, you guys can do better than that. Come on. This is the last praise of 2023. Yes, Lord. As you make your way back, okay, high five your friend and say, I will sing of the goodness of God. You know, it's so good to be worshipping together with all of us over here at TC. And um, as you make your way back, okay, we have come to a very special time in our service. And one of the ways that we give thanks, one of the ways that we show that we are uh, thankful to God is by the giving of our tithes and offering, okay? So, as usual, okay, there are two ways that you can give of your tithes and offering. You can give it online, okay, via the QR codes that you see on the screen right now. Now, these QR codes, just a friendly reminder, you can only scan the QR codes with your banking app, okay? If not, it doesn't work, okay? So scan it with your banking app, okay? The second way that you can give is on-site uh, on the, at where the, the offering boxes are at, okay? So same thing again, uh, the QR code or the box with the red border, okay, is for our regular ties and offering. For the blue border, is for our faith mission pledges, okay? So as you are getting ready to give to the Lord, why not we just open our hearts quieten down and let's pray. Come, let's pray. Lord, we want to give thanks to you because Lord, we acknowledge that first, everything comes from you and that Lord, as we give of our offering, Lord, may it be a small token of our appreciation, of our thanksgiving, of our gratitude towards you. And Lord, we pray that as we give, that our hearts will be cheerful, that we will give as cheerful givers because Lord, you say that you love the cheerful giver. And Lord, we just commit every single cent of the offering that goes in uh, to the furtherance of your kingdom. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. All right, amen, amen. Okay, we have a grand total of three announcements for today, okay? Number one, there is no Suntec service on some of these dates in 2024. Okay, so take out your phones, take a picture of this. Take note, these are the dates that we only have service at Tide Centre, but it shouldn't affect y'all because y'all all are here for youth service. Okay? Next, on-site prayer meeting. Okay? Uh, this Wednesday's on-site prayer, this business, sorry, this Wednesday's prayer meeting will be held on-site here at TC. Um, it will start at 8 p.m. It will be bilingual. Okay, so just take that. Take note of that. And uh, we'll see you there. Okay, if you can't make it on-site, there's always the online streaming of it where you can join in as well. Last but not least, we have our Holy Communion coming up next weekend. Okay, so as a reminder that uh, we'll be having our Holy Communion. So those people joining us online, please prepare the elements beforehand so that you don't miss out when we have or when we are carrying out the service. Okay, so if you're ready to wrap up the year 2023, ready or not? Some, some of you not ready, some of you ready, okay. But let's turn our eyes to the screen and watch this short video.
Can we give thanks to God for what He has done in 2023? Tell the person next to you, I thank God for you. I say that, I thank God for you, all right? You know, as we wrap up 2023, it's time to travel to where? What? <laughs> 2024, right? It's so fast, right? And before you travel, what is one thing you need to do before you travel? Pack your what? Pack your bag. How many of you here, you know, I believe you know, in this holiday season, you guys travel to many places, right? How many of you here, you pack your own bag one? You pack your own bag, right? Ah, that's good, that's good, all right, okay? So we all need to pack our bag when we go for camps, when we go to holidays. You know, my goal each time when I pack my bag is to make sure I pack as light as I can, but ensure I have everything I need. You know, last time I like to overbring things. How many of you can understand what I'm saying? You want to overbring things. You're supposed to bring just four sets of clothes, you bring five, six, seven, just in case not enough, correct? All right, and I, I will never forget one of the most tiring trips that I had was at Hong Kong many years back. I went to Hong Kong, Macau, and back to Hong Kong. So I need to change to three hotels, right? So every time I change hotel, I have to pack my luggage, carry the luggage from one place to another. And mind you, in Hong Kong train station, there are many, many steps. Many steps. So I carry the heavy luggage, go down, go up, go down. Oh, I tell you, I feel so exhausted after the entire trip. I didn't really enjoy And I tell myself, wow, next time I better pack light, all right? I better pack lightly, okay? That's why it's so good to travel light so that you won't weigh down, be weighed down by the additional load and you can go far when you're carrying lesser because your luggage is lighter, right? And I was just preparing for today's sermon. I sense the Lord want us to travel light. To travel light as we enter 2024 so that we can go far and not grow weary. See, the travel light is to travel without taking a lot of heavy things with you but only what is necessary. Similarly, there might be issues that we have been holding on to that's weighing us down, baggages that are unresolved, and God does not want you to carry it forward as you enter 2024. See, 2024 is a new year, a new season, and God wants to experience you to experience new breakthroughs and blessings. And that's why it's so important that before we end the year, just two more days, right, we pack our luggage or pack our bags properly all right, so that we can enter this year with new breakthroughs. So are you ready to pack your luggage? Are you ready to travel light? Are you ready? No, yes. I brought my luggage because we're going to pack our bag, all right? This luggage has been with me for many years, all right? This is the luggage that I brought to Hong Kong also, I remember. All right, so are you ready to travel light? Yes? You say no or yes, also don't matter because it will be 2024, all right? So let's pray first. Come, let's pray. Let's close our eyes and pray. Lord, this day we thank you, Lord. We know that it's going to be a great year ahead. But Lord, I just ask for your presence to be here even as you speak to us. Because Lord, I know that you want each of your sons and daughters to experience new breakthroughs as they enter a new year. So may your presence be here and speak to each one of us here. In Jesus' most precious name, we all pray. Amen. All right. And today, we're going to learn from a Bible character who knows how to travel light. This man... He traveled to many places, all right? From the land of Canaan to Egypt, from a rich man's house to a prison, from the prison to the palace. Do you know who is it? Do you know who is it? Yes, his name is Joseph. And we're going to look at three verses from the Bible that interestingly sums up his life, all right? Anybody here called Joseph? All right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, come. Let's turn our Bible to Genesis 41, verse 50 to 52. It says this. Before the years of famine came, two sons were born to Joseph by Esenef, daughter of Potiphar, right? prince of old. Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh and said, It's because God has made me forget all my trouble and all my father's household. The second son he named Ephraim and said, It's because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. So today I want to share with you two steps to travel light. Two steps to travel light. The first is this. To travel light, we need to first let go of our past disappointments to God. Let go of our past disappointments to God. And this was seen in Joseph's life through his firstborn. Remember, Joseph had two sons, right? And he named his firstborn Manasseh. See, names in the Bible is not just a name, but it has a lot of significance where the meaning of the name represents things that God wants to do or has done in someone's life. So for Manasseh, his name means to forget. All right, to forget. 
And it doesn't mean that Joseph wants to forget his son. No, all right? But to Joseph, he gave his son this name to remind him how God has made him forget all the troubles which enabled him to travel like all these years. You see, Joseph's life was filled with disappointments ever since he turned 17 years old. How many of you are turning 17 next year? Don't worry, we're not, we're not talking about you, all right, okay? So ever since he turned 17, his life went all the way down. Right? You can read more about his life from Genesis 37 all the way to 50. But let me give you a short, a very short TED Talk, all right, about his life, all right? Okay, ready? This is okay. So this is Joseph. This is Joseph, all right, okay? He's the son of Jacob and has 11 brothers in total. But none of them like him. Because why? He was his father's favorite. Right? That's why I never show favoritism, okay? So his father did a color code and gave it to Joseph to represent his birthright, to represent how special he was, to represent God's favor on him, which made the brothers super mad. Every time he wore the coat around, all the brothers really want to taupok him, all right, okay? And the last straw came when Joseph shared his God-given dreams to his brothers. He said that God gave him a dream that his brothers, his parents, will bow down to Joseph, all right? Actually, this dream implied that Joseph was going to be of high authority, of high position, right? but the way he tell his brothers made, him think, made them think that he really no big, no small, you know what I mean? Meta, me all right, okay? Which made him hate Joseph so much to the point they wanted to kill him. See, when you thought you have support from your family, nah, they didn't really support him. But because they want to earn some money, the brothers, right? They don't, they don't just want to kill him. They like, hey, if you can earn money, even better, right? They started to plot something out, okay? They started to plot and sold Joseph to a rich Egyptian man named Potiphar as a servant, okay? And at the same time, took away his color coat and lied to his father to say that Joseph was dead. So bad, right? And he didn't just stop there. When he was in Egypt, he gave his best to clean the house, right? But while Potiphar was away, his wife tried to lure him because he's very handsome, right? He's very handsome. She tried to lure him and, and despite resisting her, like, don't touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me, right? The wife accused Joseph to have slept with her, which landed him into a prison. Oh, Poor thing, right? He did everything right, but was wrongly accused, was betrayed and got into jail. See, in prison, he used his gifting to help prisoners interpret their dreams, serving their needs, and told them to remember him when they were out. But they've forgotten him. So Joseph spent a total of 13 long years of being betrayed, misunderstood, neglected, until one day, his life changed. In Genesis 41, Pharaoh, who was a king of Egypt, had two dreams, and no one in his court could interpret them. But word was sent to Pharaoh about Joseph's ability to interpret dreams, and Joseph was brought to Pharaoh. God gave Joseph the ability to interpret his dreams and even helped Pharaoh to come up with a brilliant plan so that there would be enough food to last through the famine that was coming. And because of this, Pharaoh puts Joseph second in command, which is like the prime minister of Egypt. They fulfilled the dream that God gave Joseph when he was a youth, when he was only 17. Right now, he should be plus 13 years, about 30 plus, all right? 30, all right? So this is Joseph's life. Back to my sermon, all right, okay? So 13 long years of suffering, all right, of disappointment that Joseph experienced from his loved one to the people he served. You see, he has every right, right? Every right to be bitter, to, be, to harbor anger, especially towards his family, from having everything to being nothing. Yet he chose to let go of his past disappointments to God, which can be seen in these two decisions that Joseph made in his life. The first is naming of his son, his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Right, he gave his two sons Egyptian names. Remember, he was in Egypt already when he, gave, when he had these two sons, right? And since Pharaoh was the one that promoted him, gave him a position and recognized his gifting, all right, he could have gave his two sons Egyptian names. But no, he chose to give them Hebrew names to remember where he was from. He could have cut every family ties, all right? Like you don't want your surname anymore, right? Because your surname is back to your, where you are. He could have cut every family ties and gave names that are unrelated to his family, but he didn't. The second was when he had a face-to-face -face encounter with his brothers during the years of famine. 
See, because of famine, people around Egypt came to get food as Joseph helped to secure enough food. So when Joseph saw his brothers, right, this was what happened. In, verse, in Genesis 45, verse 3 says, I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were speechless. They were stunned to realize that Joseph was standing there in front of them and said, please come closer, he said to them. So they came closer and he said, hey, I am Joseph, your brother, all right, whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. But don't be upset and don't be angry with yourself for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your life. This famine that has ravaged the land for two years will last five more years and there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. God has sent me ahead of you to keep you and your families alive and to preserve many survivors. So it was God who sent me here, not you. And He is the one who made me an advisor to Pharaoh, the manager of the entire palace and the governor of all Egypt. Now hurry back and tell my father this. This is what your son Joseph says. God has made me master over all the land of Egypt. So come down to me immediately. You can live in the region of Goshen where you can be near me with all your children and grandchildren, your flocks and herds, everything you own. I will take care of you there for there are still five years of famine ahead of us. Otherwise, your household and all of your animals will starve. Wow. These brothers are the ones that made Joseph homeless, hungry, but look at what his response to Joseph, you know, what to his brothers. You know, I can, I can imagine the brothers, you know, from far see Joseph. Wow, they are too stunned, right? They are too stunned to speak. Maybe they are like, peeing their pants, like, oh my gosh, this is Joseph. But see how he responds, all right? Gave him, gave them food, gave them a house to stay so they will never be homeless and starved. Look at the way he made this decision in his life. Why can he do that? Why can he, this person feel, who's, feel, who's, who's being bullied by the brothers, can do this the moment he saw the brothers. Why? It's because he chose to let go of disappointments to God. He chose to let go of all his past disappointments to God. And that's why he named his son Manasseh, which is to forget all his troubles. To forget all his troubles. See, like it or not, our past disappointments dictate the decisions we make in the present. Our past disappointments dictate the decisions we make in the present. For example, right, if I go to this store and the food is not nice at all, I most likely will not want to buy again. All right? I remember you know, drinking this, this soup, right, clam chowder soup from this particular store. After that, I got food poisoning. Do you think I will go back there? No, okay? it was a horrible experience, okay, the food poisoning thing. I thought I said, I will never ever want to go there and drink their soup anymore, okay? So, you see, same thing, you know, when we face disappointments in life, it kind of dictates our present and future decisions. You know, some of us here, maybe in this year or in the years um, before that, we have many disappointments from our own family, from our friends, or even our own cell group. And we haven't unpacked all this disappointment. It's still in our luggage, is still in our luggage, all right? Maybe some of us here. I'm going to unpack, right? Remember, we need to pack our bag, right? Maybe some of us here. It's not a magic trick, we are, we are. Maybe some of us here. We have disappointments from our own family. Right? It's the bag filled with a lot of disappointments from what our family did. I mean, some of us here, until now, we always feel that we can never meet the expectation. Our results can never be good enough. Or some of us here, we have a lot of comparison. Maybe our parents compare us with our sibling, and we always feel that, hey, I'm not loved. All right? And we have a bag of disappointments here, packed in our luggage, and until now, we still hold on from our family. I mean, some of us here, we have disappointments from our own friends. All right? Maybe they betray us, they never talk to us, they never show us, always see the IG story, they go out but they never invite us, and you feel disappointed, like why am I not part of their life? And until now, you can still remember it, it's all in this bag. Alright, me, some of us here, we're disappointed with our own self. It's like, why can't I be better? And you always feel that because of that, you're disappointed of yourself, you don't dare to try new things. People give you some tasks, they suddenly tell you to do this, you say, no, 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 not me, I don't think I can. All right? Because you always feel you are never there. All right? you, you are afraid that you might fail, and there's a lot of disappointments towards yourself. And maybe because of all this, you're disappointed with God Himself too. 
that you feel like maybe God hates me. Maybe I don't belong to this place. And it's all packed in your bag. And the thing about disappointment is this. Because of all the disappointments, you kind of put all these disappointments into yourself, that you label yourself. You know, maybe all of us here until now, we have this quote that's filled with a lot of labels like, I'm not love. I'm... <laughs> All right? But it's filled with a bit tired already. I mean, I need to. <laughs> Maybe all of us here, we have a lot of jacket filled with a lot of labels because of our disappointments. Labels like, I'm not love, I'm not good enough, all right? I'm alone, I'm a mistake. You know, something about Joseph is this. He may have lost his colorful coat. Remember, the brothers took away from him? But he never once lost his identity in God. He may have lost his colourful coat, but throughout the years of suffering, he never once lost his, his identity in God. Some of us here, because of past disappointments, until now, you're still wearing these labels and you can't let it go. The Lord says today, will you remember who you are? Will you allow His Word to be defined, define you instead? And it must come back to the position where you choose to let this go, to let all these labels go, to let all these disappointments go. And you know, I'll just sense that some of us here, we find it hard to let go. Maybe until now, your luggage still have a kid's clothes. This is my baby clothes. Cute, right? But until now, some of us here, we still have a kid's clothes. Or we still remember what our parents did when we, are, when we are five years old, when we are six years old. And no matter how they try to love us, we can't accept their love. Because we, until now, you still remember 10 years back, you did this to me. Five years back, you did this to me. And you can't seem to let it go. And until now, because of that, no matter how they try to love you, try to care for you, you can't accept. Because you're still holding on to this clothes, to this past disappointments. But the Lord says today, will you learn to let go? You see, the thing about us as humans is this. We like to forget what we should remember and remember what we should forget. We like to forget what we should remember and remember what we should forget. You know, I can understand because it took me many years. It took me many years to help me see that my parents love me for who I am, whether or not I did well in my exams. Because of all, it was a one trauma in my life, right? Which some of you I shared with you before. It was my PSLE. I will never forget. Until now, I can still remember the whole scene, all right, okay? That my parents were so disappointed with my PSLE results. They didn't talk, my dad, my dad especially, he didn't talk to me for two weeks, all right? Two weeks because I brought shame to the family. And because of that, because of that incident, I took many years trying to strive to everyone that I'm not stupid. But that's, that's the most stupidest decision to ever do, all right? Okay? I tried to prove to everyone that I'm not stupid, especially to my parents. But, but you know, as I was just sitting down reflecting about these disappointments, God showed me this. If I didn't do well in my PSLE, I will never go into this school that allowed me to know Jesus Christ. And, if I, if, and it was through this school that I began to know the Lord, that I began to grow in the Lord, and through that, I learned to forgive. But more than that, I brought my whole family to Christ many years later. You see, this, this, this you see, thank, let's thank God, yeah. But what I'm trying to say is this. You see, this incident, this disappointment, the evil one can try to make it me distance from my family, make me traumatized for life. But what God do is to turn the whole situation around that brings salvation not just to me but my entire household. And this is the power when you choose to let go. When you choose to let go of your past disappointments and see what God is doing through your disappointment. This is something that Joseph could understand. This is something that Joseph could understand. And that is why in Genesis 50 verse 20 it says, you intended to harm me but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. You intended to harm me. The disappointments in life can harm you, can hurt you. But hear this, God can use every disappointment in your life to turn it for good. Just like what He do for Joseph. But you must first choose to let it go. You must first choose to let it go. Alright? And then I just want to share with you this. That God wants to bless you with this gift of forgetting disappointments instead of holding it on just like Joseph. But the question is this, will you learn to let go? 
will you learn to let go? So I'm going to share just two ways to let go, all right? The first is this. You need to first ask the Lord to help you forget and forgive. Now, to forget doesn't mean you don't remember anymore. Like what I say, until now I can still remember the whole sin, all right, okay? But to forget is to you not let the sin or let, not let the people that hurt you had a foothold in you. It means you can still see the person that hurt you, but you don't feel the anger anymore, all right? This is what it means to let go, to forget, all right? But at the same time, to forgive them, to forgive them. Forgiving doesn't mean you agree with what they do, all right? But because you recognize that I too has the capacity to do what they do, also to hurt others, to recognize that hey, it was through God that we have the, the, the gift of forgiveness. And that is why we can forgive others. The second is this, to let go is to lay down every negative thoughts and bring it to the cross. Lay down every negative thoughts and bring it to the cross. So I encourage all of us here this. Before we end 2023, will you learn to let go? Will you learn to let go? Will you write down every negative thoughts that you have that's hurting you, labors that's upon you? Write it down and say, God, this day I want to let it go. Throw it away as like a symbol to let it go. Say, God, this day, take it away. I don't want these labors to follow me into 2024. You know, there's this verse, there's this quote that I came across that really, that I held hold. It says this, the first to apologize is the bravest. The first to forgive is the strongest. The first to forget is the happiest. The first to forget is the happiest. Today, will you tell God, help me to forget. Help me to forget my past hurts. Help me to forget all my disappointments so that I can receive your blessings, so that I can receive breakthroughs in 2024. Will you tell that to the Lord? Amen. Tell the person next to you, let go of our past disappointments. Two steps to travel light. The first is this, let go of past disappointments. The second is to lay hold of God's promises. It's to lay hold of God's promises. After letting go of past disappointment, then we can lay hold of God's promises to travel light. You see, to lay hold is to let the Word of God soak into your life that it permeates on everything that we do. You know, I'm not sure about you, but I'm definitely feeling very anxious entering 2024. Actually, every year and I'll feel anxious on it, okay? Because so, I have a lot of worries, a lot of fears of what is to come, which can actually weigh me down of being excited of the new things that God can do in my life. But what I learned throughout that whole year, all right, throughout the different years, is laying hold of God's promises is what can bring us certainty in an uncertain world. Laying hold of God's promises is what can bring certainty in an uncertain world, which free us from our worries and our fears. And this is sin in the meaning of the name of Joseph's second son, Ephraim, which means fruitful. Ephraim means fruitful. In verse 52, he says, The second son he named Ephraim and said, It is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. See, fruitfulness, I'm just reading this verse, fruitfulness and suffering is like an oxymoron, right? Which you don't usually use in the same sentence. To be fruitful means to be successful, right? In what you're given to do. Suffering means you're suffering, like you're in pain, right? Okay? And for Joseph, like, it's true that his life is filled with suffering the moment he was sold to Egypt to be a slave. But the amazing part was he became fruitful. He became fruitful when he was successful in what he was given to do because he lay hold of God's promise. You see, ever since he got the color coat, colorful coat from his dad, he knew that God's favor was always on him and that's why though he went through the darkest valley not knowing when God's dream would be fulfilled, especially the moment his brother sold him away, he chose to draw close to God, giving his best in whatever he was given which made him fruitful. See, when Joseph was in Potiphar's house, all right, he gave his best knowing that the Lord was with him and everything he do will be fruitful. In Genesis 39 verse 2, it says, The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. And because, that, because of that, he that led him to be highly favoured by Potiphar and trusting everything he owned to Joseph. In verse 4, it says, Joseph found favour in the eyes of his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. When Joseph was in prison, he gave his best as a prisoner as he recognised that the Lord was with him. 
It says in, in verse 20 onwards, it says, but while, but while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him and showed him kindness and granted him favour in the eyes of the prison warden. The warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison and he was made responsible for all that was done. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. You see, in every season of Joseph's life, he always laid hold of God's promise that gave him the certainty even in the darkest pit of his life that helped him in the, in, to be fruitful in the land of suffering. Similarly, as we enter 2024, we can travel light into this new year without feeling anxious or fearful as God's favour is upon us too. That He will make us fruitful in the land of uncertainty in the year 2024. I'm not sure, but I want you to declare this, you know. God will make me fruitful in... Maybe it's the school that you're going, the places that you're going, the year in fruitful in 2024. And this is the promise that God has, not just for Joseph, but for all of us here, that God will make us fruitful. It's seen throughout the Bible too. In Psalms 1 verse 1 to 3, it says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. But those who delight in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on His law day and night, that person is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do, prosper. First King chapter 2, verse 3 says, And observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in obedience to Him, and keep His decrees and commands. His laws and regulations as written in the law of Moses. Do this, so that you may prosper in all you do, wherever you go. If you look at all these verses, it's very common. As long as you stay close to God, as long as you draw close to God, whatever you are given, whether in good times or bad times, God will make you fruitful. God will make you fruitful. And that's why as believers of Christ, when you choose to lay hold of His Word, His promise, whatever uncertainty there may be, difficult times you may encounter, right, you can be assured that God's favour and provision will always be upon you. You don't need to worry or fear. You can travel light as He's walking you through. Isaiah 43 verse 2 to 3 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. Is there someone here today, you're feeling very anxious on what is to come? You're very fearful. Maybe you're going to a new school, getting your O or A level results, and you're not sure what the future holds. Will you lay hold of God's promises? You know, I sense some of us here, you have, you have been laying hold on God's promises but you have not seen any breakthroughs in your life yet. God didn't give you what you want maybe in 2023. Maybe the school you are given isn't the school you want, but the Lord says today, will you continue to trust in me? Will you continue to trust in me? See, hear this. It took Joseph 13 years to see God's dream fulfilled in his life, and he never once lost sight of God, for he knew that every plan, good or bad, was to lead to God's dream in his life. And that's why he chose to be faithful. He chose to give his best as a slave and as a prisoner. Similarly, God's timing is always the best, but while we are waiting, we need to learn to lay hold of, to he, on him and be faithful to what you are given. Just like Joseph, who is faithful. Because you never know how all these things connect you to God's big plan in your life. You never know how all these things connect you to God's big plan in your life. Just like Joseph, from a slave to a prisoner to someone like a prime minister. You know, if he chose to just give up being a slave and not give his best, he may never be in a prison. But if he chose not to be a good prisoner, he may never have a chance to talk to Potiphar, uh, to talk to the, the king, uh, Pharaoh itself, all right? What I'm trying to say is this, everything is what, God's, what, what God is doing is to piece you into God's big plan in his life. The question is, will you trust in him in all this? And that's why I want to encourage all of us here. In your luggage, will you pack a Bible, a journal, all right? In your luggage, will you pack a Bible and a journal? You know, um, what really helped me overcome my anxieties, you know, is really when I learned to come back to God and have 
You know, all these are my journeys where I write God's promises. So every time when I do my devotion, I won't just be reading a, a verse and that's it. I will really write it down. And these three journals are very important in my life, actually. Every time when I'm, when I'm feeling down, I'll just go and read it because that's where I write God's promises and that's where I write my reflection on what God spoke to me through the verses. And these are three different seasons of my life that it was through. You know, remember? God made me fruitful in the land of suffering. These three journals was also the journal when I was going through bad times. You know, I remember this journal was a journal when my dad um, got cancer. So I remember that one whole year, you know, when your family is sick, when there's one family member that's sick, it really brings a lot of chaos to the whole family. So there were lot, lots of quarrel among my sis, my mom, because of my dad's health and everything. And I remember, I'll never forget there was once where I was just leading cell group and halfway my, my sister called me and said, hey, mom left home and I don't know where, we cannot get her. You know, I was so, I was in a panic shock. Like, God, help, all right? Okay, I don't know what's going on in my family. Why, why is it like this? You know, I still remember because it's all written here, right? But it was true. All this, but through that, I, how it helps me is when I write God's, when I write verses in the Bible to help me with my anxiety, to help me with my worry. And as I read through, I see how God is faithful and God helped me overcome every fear that I was facing in that one whole year. All right, so this was one of it. The other one was um, this one. This one was COVID season. It was my dad, when my dad passed on and my grandma, and I remember my mom went through a tough time because she, at the same time, she lost her mom and her husband. And our, that was the year that I really, um, that, uh, me and Jasper, we just, um, we just stayed with her through to take care of her. It wasn't easy because she was going through Tough time, I was going through tough time also. And sometimes I have to, uh, to, um, to, to support her because I was like her only friend. And, um, but there, there were a lot of misunderstanding and here and there. But it was through God's word that really helped me through as I take care of her in those times. And I was just reading it. And I see wow, God really transformed my mom's life to where she is right now. And I'm really going to give thanks to God. Every time when my mom is going through bad time, I was just write down, God, please help her. Help her to have friends, to have community. And now she's, she's more happening than me now. She doesn't go, go out, go meet her friends and all this. And it's really God's, God's um, faithfulness in, in that, that season. And the last journal, which is a journal that right now is still continuing, is when I'm getting pregnant, all right? Okay, when I have, have Natty, Nathaniel, all right, okay? I mean, I'll be honest with you, you know, I, I thought that the moment I get married, I'll have a child, all right? But I don't know about who, all the women here, all the ladies here. I was so anxious being pregnant. <laughs> That's why I delay and all this. But um, finally, when I got netty, I remember in 2023, because, oh, sorry, 2022, all right? It was the year that I got netty. That's why I gave birth to him in 2023, right? I remember I was so anxious being a mother. Like, why be a good mom? You know, how will the pregnancy journey be? It was so scary here. And then I wrote all this. And right now, Nathaniel, right, who wants my son, he's seven months old already. And it's like when I read through this, this entire journal of laying hold of God's promises in all those dark times, I've seen His faithfulness throughout. And that's why I want to encourage all of you here. Have a journal, have a Bible, and pack it with you as you go 2024. Because I do not know what's a year ahead. I, I cannot assure you that it will be good or bad. I'm not sure. I'm not God. But God's Word can bring us certainty in every season of our life. When you choose to lay hold of His Word, when you choose to spend time with Him. Okay, so can I tell the person next to you, spend time with God, all right? Okay? And He will definitely help you through in every season of your life. So two steps to travel light. The first is this. Number one, let go of past disappointments. Number two, lay hold of God's promises. Lay hold of God's promises. You know, as I was just preparing this sermon, I was reminded of this lady named Judith Halim, all right? As her life reminds me of Joseph, all right? You may not know her, but you may, be, you may have eaten at her restaurant before. She's the founder, the owner of Olive Vine. Anyone here ate, go there before, Olive Vine? Yes, yes, all right, yes. Okay, one hand there. Yes, John, all right, okay. It's good food. It's at, near Marina Square there, okay? She's also a pastor along with her husband. And this is her story before she came to Christ, all right? You can read many of her testimonies on, in, in Salt and Light articles here, and it's very good, all right? But this is one of her testimonies before she came to know the Lord. And this is her story. She said this, I'm an Indonesian married to a Singaporean, her ex-husband back then. We used to live in Jakarta, Indonesia. I was only 20 at that time. I came to Singapore in July 1994 during my eight month of pregnancy. The objective was to have my baby born in Singapore to obtain citizenship. 
The second day after my delivery, the doctor released news that they detected some abnormality in my baby. The doctors brought in more specialists and concluded that my baby Joel had four complications. Number one, three holes in her heart. Second, right ventricle is very thick and it prevents the blood circulation to go to the upper part of the body. The third is abnormal brain development. And the fourth is hemophilia carrier. At that juncture, the doctor was convinced that she would not leave. He said that she would need to go through several surgical procedures when she's a little more developed. And with that, they told me to return home for the time being and wait. I was given strict instruction to watch over her very carefully and monitor her condition because if she could turn blue, she would be gone. And because of Joelle's condition, I had to remain in Singapore to seek further medical treatment while Joelle's father shuttered between Singapore and Jakarta. When Joelle was one month old, I received the most unexpected news from Joel's father. He said, we are not meant for each other and he doesn't love me anymore. And with that, he left us the next morning returning to Jakarta. Here I was, alone with a sick child in a foreign land. My whole world had caved in on me. I kept asking myself what went wrong and tried so hard to save our relationship. But he never gave it a chance. It was when Joel was three months old, I finally took courage to fly to Jakarta to salvage my marriage. Then I finally realized the problem has got nothing to do with me, but Joel's father instead. When I got into our home in Jakarta, I saw in my own eyes that he already had another woman living with him in what used to be our home. All my dreams and my hope were completely and utterly shattered. I returned to Singapore totally defeated, devastated, full of pain and agony and misery and depression. At the same time, I was living with Joel in a small rented room in HDB flat with no money, no friends, and no one to help me. There seemed to be no way out of my situation and I just want to end it. It was in the afternoon around 2 p.m. when I wrote a letter to my mother in Indonesia telling her how sorry I was that I would not be able to take care of her in her old age. Just as I was finishing up the letter, an insurance agent called and asked if I would like to take up the insurance policy for my baby. I said no and very briefly explained my circumstances. He did not push me further but instead invited me to church and said to me that there is a special speaker preaching and said I should attend the service. I accepted his offer and he came to pick me up with his wife. When we arrived, I was seated at the back with my baby in my arms and the place was packed with at least a thousand people. Later, when the preacher invited people to an altar call, I was singled out and asked to come on stage. He began to pray and asked the whole congregation to stretch forth their hands to my direction and he began to pray. He released a word to, to me and he said, God knows what you are going through and you will walk out of it to be a better person, a better servant for Him. I still don't know what was going on at that time, but I saw the whole auditorium filled with red and I gave my life to Jesus. I left the auditorium exhausted and I went straight home and slept so soundly for the first time in months. When I woke up at 9 o'clock the next morning, I looked out the window and something felt different. I used to always stare helplessly and without hope at the same tree, the same sky, the same blocks of flats around. But something is different this time. Things around me seem to look more beautiful. Something was taken away from me supernaturally. The pain in my chest is gone. The feeling of doom and gloom is gone. And I know that it has to be Jesus. It has to be Him that healed me and took away my pain last night when everyone prayed over me at the meeting. I picked up the letter that I wrote the day before and told myself that I'm not going to die as I'm going to live to share the goodness of my healer, Jesus Christ. I began to pick up the bits and pieces of brokenness inside of me and I started to have hope. I started to look for a job. As I did not speak English or Mandarin at that time, although I have a law degree from Indonesia, no one accepted me. Only one, which is a, which is a security guard at the FNN Coca-Cola firm. My pay was only $2.80 per hour for at least nine hours a day I worked under the hot sun. $2.80 only. Life was tough. I could hardly make ends meet. My daughter was sick. And I could, really, I could not afford the medical fee even as the doctor was pressing me to send her for surgery that would cost more than 100 k But our God is a promise-fulfilling God. He is always faithful. 
He gave me a verse in Joel 2 verse 25, 27. He says, He said, I will restore you in the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. My great army which I send among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. Somehow things started to change. Four months after working as a security guard, I had another offer from a construction company to be a part-time sales clerk which paid $4 per hour for three months assignment. And by His grace, I fulfilled the job well and the company extended my employment for another three months with a salary of $8 per hour by the grace of God. I was offered another permanent job with the company and I was made an administrator. The company also sent me for English course and further studies. Again, by His grace, I was promoted from an administrator to assistant and manager and then to a manager and later to a senior manager and this was within a short period of four years. From there, I was a headhunter for senior management position in other companies and finally, God put me to where I am to manage a successful business as a managing director. And all this is only possible because of God. Even till today, as I look at my own limitation and capacity, I'm still amazed and in awe at the abundance of God's provision. As God was restoring my career and finances, it was also during this time that I met Jason, who's my present husband. The Lord restored to me a husband, a God-fearing man, a good husband, and a good father to Joel. One that accepts both me and Joel as who we are. My life was restored according to His promise. My daughter then was still very sick. She was teen and she was very teen and not able to walk at the age of four and too weak to even stand. The doctor said that she would die and has no hope to live past the age of six. Even if she somehow managed to live, she would never grow physically as do as, uh, as, do as the normal children. But you hear this, when it is the end of man's way, it is the beginning of God's way. When it's the end of man's way, it's the beginning of God's way. I knew at that point of time that I have God and my God is able to do what man cannot do. I began to pray with Jason, my church, my, church, my cell group, my pastor, pray along and I cried to God using the prayer of Hannah and said, Lord, heal my child, Lord. And we continue trusting God for healing. In December 2000, when Joel was about six years old, I heard a voice from my inner being ask me to bring Joel back to see the specialist again. The cardiologist did a mammogram and printed out the result to make comparison with the previous result and started asking me a lot of questions. What do you do to this child? Where have you been? Why do you stop your regular visit for the past two years? I replied, I did not do anything. I did not bring her to anywhere. I only pray. And the doctor say, it cannot be because Joel's heart is perfect. Joel's heart is perfect. And with the result showing a normal heart, which is totally different from the last scanning that was done, it is a new heart. All thanks to God. Today, Joel is 12 years old and attends a special school. She's also appointed as a class monitor as well as a school prefect. With the heart complication gone, she's able to jump, run, and even swim like a normal child. She also plays the piano, sing and dance, but most important of all, she loves the Lord. She loves the Lord. Can we give thanks for her life? Amen. You know, her whole life is really like a life of Joseph. Being kicked out by her own husband, her ex-husband, stranded in a foreign land, and despite having a law degree, she can't get into any other law firm, firm but chose to let go of her past disappointment and lay hold of God's promises. Being faithful to whatever job God gave her to do, which opens the door for her promotion to where she is. Not only that, her whole family was restored. And hear this, as the Lord did it for Joseph, the Lord can do it for you, just like how He did it for Judith too. The Lord can do it for you just like how He did it for Judith, just like how He did it for Joseph because this is the same God that we worship. Amen? And first, Peter, and why? The reason is because He cares for you. He cares for you. First Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. See, God doesn't want us to continue living our life carrying bitterness, carrying anger, 
carrying worries and hopelessness. He wants us to learn to let go so that we can lay hold of His promises. He wants us to let go so that we can lay hold of His promises. We can't lay hold if we are not letting go. Hear this, youth. We can't lay hold of God's promises if we are not, not letting go of past disappointments. We need to first let go first. If not, if you are holding on, then we are building a wall from what God wants to do in our life. And that is so important. If you have any bitterness today, unforgiveness, anger or disappointments, will you say that God this day, I want to let go because Lord, I want to experience your promise. I want to experience your blessing. If that's who you are today, will you say that God this day, I want to let go so that I will not bring all these past disappointments into 2024. But I want to lay hold of your promise because I know you are a promise keeper. You are faithful. And I'm going to see your goodness through all the years of my life. So if that's who you are today, we're going to stand right now. We're going to stand right now. Yeah. You know, before we end 2023, I'm just going to give you some time with the Lord. We're not, not going to rush through this time. I want, you, I want you to ask the Lord, Lord, this day, search my heart. Are there disappointments you are holding on to? You know, just now, remember I showed you this child's shirt. This is something that the Lord impressed with me. Some of you here, you still hold on to what your parents did, what your friends did many years ago. And you can't let go. And because, because you can't let go, you can't receive love, from people around you. You can't receive love from your parents even though they have changed because you harbour the anger towards them. The Lord says today, will you let go? Will you let go and say, God, this day, I want to receive your blessings once again. Once again. I want to receive your love. I want to let go so that I don't harbour it. Some of you here, you have many disappointments. The Lord says today, disappointments, yes, we can never avoid but sometimes God wants to mold us to become a better person. But more than that, don't let these disappointments hinder you from seeing what God is trying to do in your life. Today, will you let go so that you can lay hold of His promise? More than that, the Lord wants to really do a new work in our lives today. So I want you all to close your eyes. And when you say a simple prayer, God, search my heart. Search my heart, Lord. Lord, you know my heart condition. You know if there's bitterness, there's anger, there's anxiety, there's worry. You know what's in me. And the Lord says today, will you let it go? Will you let go so that you can lay hold of my promise? Will you surrender it? Will you forgive me some of you, until now you can't forget this particular person. Every time you see this person, there's an anger you have towards this person. Will you say that, Lord, this day I want to forgive. I want to forgive, Lord. Because I don't want that unforgiveness to block me from receiving your love and your blessing, Lord. And right now, we're going to go in a time of worship. If that's who you are today, I want you to come to the front. By coming to the front, you're, you're taking a step of faith to say, God, this day, I want to let go. Because I want to lay hold of your blessing. By coming to the front, you're saying, God, I want to come clean with you. I don't want to hold on all these things anymore. I want a new beginning. I'm sick and tired of holding on to my old life. I'm sick and tired of holding on to all this bitterness in my life. I want to have a new beginning. I want to receive your joy. I want to receive your joy and your love once again. That's who you are. Come to the front. Whether you are a member or a leader, you know that maybe there are certain disappointments you are still holding on to. The Lord says today, will you let it go down here right now? Taking a step to come to the front so that God can do a new beginning. So as we worship the song, that's who you are. Will you come?
So just come to the you front of minister. There's someone here you've been praying, but you have not seen God bring breakthroughs in your life. The Lord says today, will you learn to trust in Him? Some of you are disappointed with God. Will you come to the front and say, God is there, I want to trust in you once again. this ministry to happen I want you right now to find a partner and I want you to pray for the person and I sense if there's someone here you do not know the Lord today the Lord wants you to know Him to receive His love so why don't right now you just find a partner right now and just pray for one another alright if there's anything that you know that you're holding on to why don't we pray God's goodness and God's love to be upon you
Let me pray all pray for you. <laughs> Let's close our eyes. No, I was reminded of um, Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. It says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. See, I'm doing a new thing. Come, let's pray. Lord, this day we thank you. No, wait, wait. Before we pray, can we just put our hand in our heart first? <laughs> we all put our hands on our heart. You know, that's not throughout the whole sermon uh, when I keep saying, let it go, let it go. I keep reminded of um, Frozen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, but that aside, I joke aside. But I'm just probably to tell you that, you know, God really wants us to let it go, right? Not, not, it's not by Elsa, it's not by, but God really wants us to let it go because He cares for you. He don't want you to hold on to all this. That's why in the Bible, many times God says, forget what is behind. Strain towards what's ahead. Forget the former things so that you can see a new thing. It's a two-step. If you don't let go, you cannot lay hold. You hear this? So Lord, this day we just come, let's pray. Lord, this day we just commit our hearts into your hands. Lord, so I pray that Lord, this day we'll choose to learn to let go of our past disappointments. That you will not have a foothold in our hearts. We will not go forth in 2024 with bitterness, with anger and all this. But Lord, this day we surrender it all to you, Lord. Lord, this day we declare then Lord, you fill our hearts with your love, your joy, because Lord, we know that as we enter 2024, it'll be a year of blessing and breakthroughs because you are a God that holds our future. So Lord, we thank you, Lord, we praise you. And every day of our lives, may we always hold on to your words. There is the truth that will set us free. So Lord, this day we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' most precious name, we all pray. Amen. Can we give our loudest praise to the Lord? Amen. to you happy new year all right it's a new year and new things ahead god bless you we'll see you next year